back everyone and thank you for joining us for the second segment of our talk on circuit breakers. Hi everyone. Marius, in the last segment you talked about, well you explained to us the difference rather, uh, between the circuit breakers, the isolator and of course the earth leakage. Yes. But now if I were to pick up a circuit breaker, I am presented with a number of, well, uh, some information here on the front and I'm not sure what any of this means could you explain a little bit more yes all of these markings are there to assist you in establishing whether you have the correct circuit breaker for the right application um, first off when you have a look at the circuit breaker you will see um, there's a color on the toggle itself the on off toggle so in the off position it goes green giving you the indication that the power is switched off uh, and then when it's in the up position it gives you the red color showing you be careful um, there, there's power um, further further to this you will see that there's a marking there that says DX3 that's the product class with a 25A which gives you the amperage that's 25 amps uh, and then the C curve I'll explain the C curve in a moment but there it says C25 once again referring to the amperage Below that there is a 6013, so that 6000 there refers to the KA rating of the circuit breaker. In this case it's a 6KA circuit breaker. And then uh, the part number printed on the side. Also note that we have a little legend holder. You could now uh, remove this little legend holder and print uh, the circuit name or number or what it's for there yeah. conveniently. Uh, so because the wiring code requires for you to mark your circuit breakers so we've included a little uh, uh, legend holder there for you now if i go into a little bit more detail on the um, c curve b curve and d curve what does that mean c curve uh, it's, it's all to do with how fast the circuit breaker trips uh, c curve is a standard curve which for example if you've got a heater plugged in it will tolerate that load and you can per perhaps plug another heater in until you get closer to your threshold and your limit it will it will it will hold it and it will trip slower than a normal uh, uh, circuit breaker for example that you'd require for a dc if you want to protect sensitive electronic equipment then you don't want any overload mm -hmm. and you want it once it reaches that amperage or that threshold yeah. you want it to trip quickly to protect your yeah, equipment of course especially electronic equipment um, you would use a b curve which has a much faster tripping curve when it reaches that amps it will switch off faster then you've got a d curve which is a slower curve than c right why would you need that sean imagine a big fan that starts up Yes. And this is a massive fan and it takes a while to get up to speed. So it's running at the high, high loads, overload, in overload conditions really, um, before it gets to speed. So that circuit breaker will tolerate the overload for, for a little bit longer before it trips so you don't get nuisance trippings. So essentially that's what your uh, B, D and C curves are for. The KA rating itself um, is the the, the capacity or the rupturing capacity or that the circuit breaker can withstand if you're going to put this in full short circuit conditions mm -hmm. um, this circuit breaker under 6ka will clear a fault for uh, a couple of milliseconds for uh, 6000 amps up to 6000 okay. amps wow. um, and it should not break or explode under under, under that uh, uh, short circuit condition I would like now to take a circuit breaker that we've opened up and show you the internal workings. How does the circuit breaker work on the inside? It's quite interesting because it's quite simple. Um, I will explain. If you have a look on the inside at first glance, you can see the two top and bottom cage terminals. Those are to grip your wires uh, and they are designed in such a way that you, that to avoid any loose connections, you can tighten them up really tight. Uh, then. At the bottom here you'll see this little plate. This is the thermal uh, strip that will, it's, a, it's called a bimetal, that will determine the current that runs through it. It will start bending. I'll show you now how it trips. And then the, over here we've got the magnetic coil. 
So this will induce a magnetic field under short circuit conditions. A little plunger in the middle will then move down. This little guy here is the rocker. Once we push on this, it will trip the circuit breaker's toggle. So I will, I'm going to illustrate now, for example, a short circuit. Uh, 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 and lastly, we've got the arc shoot here. So this arc shoot uh, breaks the arc. If you look at the contact there at the bottom, there's the contact. Um, once that contact breaks, there's an arc that develops and these little fins uh, help disperse the, the heat so that you don't have too much heat at one point. So I'm going to switch the circuit breaker to the on position. Um, now I'm going to illustrate a short circuit. The short circuit now is going to develop a magnetic field inside this coil and instantaneously tripping the unit. So there's the plunger goes down and it trips the circuit breaker. That's a good illustration of a short circuit. Then, now imagine you plug in a heater. Uh, this little strip here is designed in such a way that it starts bending the, the, the hotter it gets. So imagine the first uh, heater that you plug in will now start bending it within the limits. Now the second heater that you plug in bends it even further down and plop, the circuit breaker trips. So that's your overload protection right there. Uh, and basically explaining the inner workings um, of, of a circuit breaker, simple as that. Um, I've shown you the single pole circuit breakers, but remember there's the two pole circuit breakers as well. They are for breaking live and neutral. And then we have the three phase, uh, the, the three pole circuit breaker for three phase applications. You also get it in a four pole if you want to break the neutral uh, with your three phase applications. In a nutshell, I think that's. Uh... Yeah, well, thanks, Marius, for sure. I now know what a circuit breaker looks like, what it feels like, and, what <laughs> and, it how, it works. <laughs> and how it works. <laughs> but um, we'll cover installation in our next segment, which will be our third and final segment on uh, the subject of circuit breakers. So please join us next time. Good, see you soon. Take care, guys. Cheers.